Star State, game number three of the 2019 ACHA Division I Women's National Championships first round play, the number three Lindenwood University Belleville Lynx and the number seven Grand Valley State Lakers. Hello everyone, Casey Roll alongside Quinn Kuski. Three of the four tickets have been punched and Quinn, number seven Grand Valley State, looks to deliver the first major upset of the tournament after winning game one a couple days ago. Responded by a furious rally by Belleville yesterday, a 10 to two shellacking. What do the Lakers have to do to win game three? They gotta get back to how they played in game one and they can't continue to rely on Allison Carlson for all of their offense. She's done everything for this team so far, three goals in the tournament. And if you're Grand Valley, you've gotta start getting offense from some of your other forwards. BB's had a solid tournament. You've had other pieces that have done things for you but you need to get a solid production from the whole team, not one or two players. The Lakers doing their pregame ritual in net and in front of netminder Lauren Allen, who Quinn wasn't able to finish the game yesterday, was pulled after 43 minutes and 50 seconds, allowed five goals on 28 shots. They need the fifth year senior to be solid today. Yeah, and it seemed like Lyndon would figure her out. They scored three goals in a row off one-timers, and we'll see if they go right back to that tonight with her between the pipes. And the opening face-off, won by the Lynx and by Allison Williams. In the attacking zone, Carlson flings a shot from the right dot. It skitters high over the crossbar, dug out by Melissa Delry. A backhand centering pass by Carlson on a four check. It flipped wide to the far wing. Smacked back in by Breland Tasker for the Lakers and banks it high off the end wall. It's pitched forward to head and played by Jamie Risley. One of eight goal scorers yesterday for the Lynx. A 10-2 win over the Lakers. The puck is knifed out to the red line by Alicia Williams, the Virginia, Minnesota native. Flicks it ahead to Delry, back to Williams below the right goal line. It's stick free by Monica Rayome, but not out of the zone. Right point, Jamie Risley fakes a shot, swings it to the left point. Lindsey Gillis, her drive, the flex off a stick in the slot. Caroms out to the right corner boards. Another shot by Risley, the flex in the slot. Here's a drive off the stick of Gillis at the flex wide to the far corner. It's dug out down the far side by Alexis Peterson. The transfer out of Marion University flips one out to Breland Tasker, and the Lakers clear the zone, and they make a line change. Early on, the Lakers have had a solid four check in the offensive end. They're kind of taking it to the Lynx right now. The Lynx had a couple chances on goal, but the Lakers were able to block them both off. The puck rolls out to neutral. It's picked up by Michaela Reed, but she enters the zone offside. Yesterday, Lindenwood putting up the most shots in this tournament, 53 over these Lakers. And if you're Grand Valley State, what's a way to limit the amount of shots being taken? Well, you got to get some of the play in your offensive end. They block, they blocked quite a few shots. It was probably going to be closer to 75 to 80 shots on goal if they weren't getting in the shooting lanes, but. The entire game was spent in the defensive end of the Lakers. you got to flip the sides. It's Jessica Walker right hash mark. Scored her first goal of the tournament yesterday. It's poke check free by Katie Galliaretti. It rolls down the left corner board. It's dug out by Connor Denton. The junior out of Winona, Minnesota. Flips the puck out to neutralize. And we get a whistle early for a high sticking play stops. Seems like both these teams playing very passive right now. Both teams kind of afraid to push too heavily early on and give up the first goal. We talked about Allison Carlson for the Lakers. Three goals this tournament, but Alicia Williams for the Lynx, how powerful their offense has been all season. She's been the main catalyst. Four goals in this tournament, along with five points. That's tied for the most in tournament play so far. Yeah, it's easy to have the most points in tournament play when your team scored 10 goals in a single game. It rolls into the Belleville attacking zone. Flip behind the net of Alley and first to the puck for the Lakers, Megan Beebe. The junior out of Lavona, Michigan. Unable to clear the zone. It's forked back below the goal line. Allison Carlson forced to play it. Rings it around the far boards. Kept in at the left point, Tessa O'Connor. Her shot the flex off the body of Allen and she throws the trapper on top to halt action. Leon, a little bit of back and forth. Very slow. Allen and Stone not tested so far. This game, will, I think this game will really open up when we have our first good scoring chance. Face off one by Williams. It's worked out to the straightaway point. Katie Lacusta flicks it toward the far corner. Williams pinches it high off the glass. It's kept in at the left point by Stelling. Smacks it off the far wall. Williams first to it behind and that holds it a backhand. Plays it along to Melissa Delry right goal line. Past a couple of fenders back over to Williams. She gets pinned off the puck at the right hash mark. It skips up 
to the skate of Lacusta, and she flips it behind and that it rolls down. And it's played first by Monica Rayome, and she flips it and guns it down. No icing. Megan Beebe streaking toward the puck in the attacking zone on an aggressive forward check. Behind the net, Rachel Smith, the first goal scorer of the tournament, centering out in front. A shot in the slot by Brinkman, and a save made by Hannah Stone. Right now, the, this feels kind of like game one, Casey. Not a lot of time in the zone for the Lakers, but when they're there, they're putting good scoring opportunities to work. We had Carlson with a shot from the slot, and right there's another shot from the slot, and these chances are starting to pile up for the Lakers. Hannah Stone, the freshman out of Killingworth, Connecticut, faced 28 shots from the Lakers, made 21 saves. She was pulled late in the game yesterday after the second period. Centering pass to Carlson from the goal line. Her shot closed off by Stone, and she halts play. Back-to-back -back shots in a span of less than 30 seconds. And you can hear this Lakers crowd and the Lakers bench. They're starting to feel an upset coming, and they're getting excited for this game. Stone in her last 10 starts to close out the regular season, 9-1 and one with a .74 goals against average. So one of the hottest goaltenders in the country to begin tournament play. It's Connor Denton, the transfer from McKendree University, ringing it around the far wall. Kept it at the right point, Sally Her Her shot the flex off a stick, dug out by Lindsey Gillis, who posted her first multi-goal game yesterday since February 7th against Adrian College in the regular season. It's Alicia Williams at the right circle of the attacking zone. Her shot the flex off a skate. It pinballs behind the net. Dug out by Allison Stapleton for the Lakers, but not out of the zone. Left point one-timer by Gillis. Locked off a skate and a stick. Denton behind the net, first to dig the puck out. She's fighting for control of it with Alicia Williams down the near goal line. It's dubbed out by Williams, but Denton controlling. She swats it out past the red line and down. It will go as an icing. Casey, we'll talk about upcoming matchups depending on who wins this game. The Lindenwood Belleville Lynx, if they go on to win as the three seed, they will take on the number two Adrian College Bulldogs. And if the Lakers can pull off the upset, they will then get the oh so easy task of playing the number one seed and defending national <laughs> champions the Lindenwood or the Liberty Flames. What a game Liberty had yesterday. Seven to two. And if there were any questions as to whether or not the Flames were still the favorites in this pool, they were squashed after yesterday's win. Yeah, they really they took it to their opponents and just dominated in every fashion of the game. Midland just didn't seem to have an answer. Megan Beebe streaking past the blue line. Her shot straight away to flex off a stick. It rolls down the far wall. Kept back in. A shot by Galliaretti is pitched out to the near point, and it's rolling out to neutralize. Dug out by Haley Curie. The fifth-year captain out of Washington, Michigan, flicks it down the far wall as the Lynx make a line change. Rolling puck at neutralize. Dug out by Williams in the Belleville defensive zone. A stretch pass, try to connect with Michaela Reed. It rolls down behind the net. Reed first to it. She digs it out behind the goal line, flicks it ahead to Williams, holds on the backhand on one hand down the far side, dances past the defender, top of the circle. Straight away, Lacusta. Her shot deflected wide, and it's gloved down by Allen to halt play. Out in front, Michaela Reed tried to screen Allen, but the fifth year senior standing at six foot three makes her third save of the game. That was a really subtle play from, from Alicia Williams but it was a very good play if you saw what happened. She was already past the puck and it kicked out behind her. She reached back with one hand, flipped it along, bounced off the boards and set up that attack. Face off one to the near corner. And off the draw, it's controlled by the Lakers with Rachel Smith. That's her first face off win of the afternoon just over five minutes into the first period. It's pinched up the near wall. Rachel Smith in the defensive zone clears it out to neutralize. Dug out by Hallie Fisher. The junior from Williams Lake, British Columbia. Panks it off the far wall. First to it for Belleville. Callie Phillips, she rings it behind the boards as the Lynx make a line change. The puck in the Laker defensive zone. Poking sticks in front. Rachel Smith clears it. She high steps past the red line. Gazelle's in the attacking zone right side. Dragging at the right hash mark. Pinched off the puck by the captain, Ashley Dietmeyer for the Lynx. Pitch forked off the high wall, one handed out to the red line, and it's smacked out to the near side. The senior from Colchester, Vermont for the Lakers. Blasts it behind the net, first to it for the Lynx. Down the far wall, Mackenzie Drost. She meanders in the defensive zone and whacks it out to the red line before it's chipped back in by Sally Her. It rolls up the near half wall, off the high glass. Lacusta for 
the Lynx controlling, but the officials calling play for a hand pass. Yeah, so far, I, I'm afraid to jinx it, but I'm going to say it anyway. We haven't had a penalty yet, and that has been the story of the first two games was the just ridiculous number of penalties. There were five Belleville penalties yesterday, the four for Grand Valley State. That was just in the second period. It's Ashley Dietmeyer for the Lynx. High-stepping in the attacking zone. Gazelling below the left hash mark. Pinched off the puck by Hoare. It's one-handed behind the net. Dietmeyer tries to play it forward. It's off the stick of Mackenzie Drost. Dietmeyer pinning her toward the end boards down the left goal line. It's pinched free by Allison Carlson. The lone goal scorer yesterday for the Lakers, posting her seventh multi-goal game of the season and her first since the middle of February. And a loss yesterday for the Lakers. A shot from the right circle by Jamie Risley. The flex behind the net. Dug out by Denton. Flicks it up to the far wall. It's careened out to Reed. She digs it out of the corner. It's Dietmeyer. Dancing past the defender. Pokes free by Brianna Welgar. She can't clear the zone. In the high slot, Delry. Her shot chested down by Allen. And play halted once again. Lauren Allen looking sharp in the first eight minutes. And she hasn't really been tested. Like there's been four shots on goals, but on goal, but that's been the style of shot that it's been. Just a wrist shot from the high, high slot. And if you're Lauren Allen, that's a very routine save. Face off will be taken by Brooklyn Bell for the link. She wins it, but it's poked free by Rachel Smith. Pushes it past the red line, nudged off the puck. She dances below the goal line. It rolls down the far corner. Lindsey Gillis pokes it free. One-handed along toward Hallie Fisher in the defensive zone. And now the Lynx can hurry, if they hurry, a three-on-two odd man rush. But below the left goal line, a shot from Mackenzie White. Whistles wide near the glove side. Dug out by Fisher down to near boards. Worked down the half wall. Rolling puck. A couple bodies falling down. It's muscled down towards Michaela Reed below the right goal line. Smacked out to the far wall by Galliaretti. And the Lakers clear the zone. It's Rachel Smith. Whips it behind the, the near goal line. But it's played ahead by Michaela Reed. Right circle, a centering pass to Flex in front. In a high slot, it's tipped ahead by Catherine Tower, rolling in the defensive zone. Muscled out to the red line, and it's dug out by Dietmeyer. The team leader in assists this tournament with four. It's flicked at the red line by the alternate tasker for the Lakers. Dietmeyer first to control. The fifth-year captain able to muscle it back out to neutralize. Dug back in by Denton behind the net. And this is something, Quinn, that we've been chronicling all tournament. Not much of a Laker forecheck to begin the first period. Well, they opened up the very beginning of the first period with a solid forecheck. And then they followed it up with a non-existent forecheck. So they've shown that they can do it. They just need to keep doing it. 11-13 remaining here in the first period. No score between the Lynx and the Lakers. Day number three of the Women's Division I National Championship. Win or go home for both teams. Behind the net, Drost controlling. Dragging on a forehand. Centering pass trying to connect with Risley at the flex wide. Risley holding right point. Her slap pass deflected into the near corner. A shot by Drost gloved down by Allen with just under 11 minutes to go. No score between the Lynx and the Lakers. No score just under... 11 minutes to play now. So far, five to two in shots. We haven't seen a lot of shots, but the Lynx are starting to pull away. Alicia Williams for the Lynx, the ACHA All-American. Set to take the face off against Brianna Welgars, the junior out of Maycomb, Michigan. Williams in her second season as an alternate. Had a couple of goals yesterday, Quinn. Now on the season went scoring. Belleville is 12 and 0 when the 5 7 forward lights the lamp. Face off one by the Lakers, only their third of the afternoon. It's pitchforked ahead by Connor Denton below the left goal line. It's smacked out by Galliaretti, left hash mark. Pinched back in by Stelling behind the net. Denton first to it. Pivots at the goal line. Poke check free by Melissa Delry, and it's finally rifled down the far side by Megan Beebe, trying to connect with Galli already. It rolls out to neutral, and it's swatted back into the Laker D zone. Ten and a half to go in the first period. No score between the Lynx and the Lakers from the Comerica Center in downtown Frisco. Couple bodies falling in the Laker attacking zone. Rolls behind the net of Hannah Stone, the 18-year-old out of Killingworth, Connecticut. Marks out signals for this Lynx attack. They skate ahead with Gillis. Just over 10 minutes to go here in the first period. It's smacked behind the net. First to the puck. Denton for the Lakers. Rolling down to near side. Smacked out to the red line. It's Megan Beebe. 
She gallops ahead past the blue line, holds in the dime. Wrist shot deflected wide blocker side. It caroms out towards Michaela Reed, and she glides ahead for the Lynx with 9.48 to go here in the first period. Still no score. One touches the puck to Dakota McAlpity. She holds on the backhand in the high slot. The wrist are deflected wide. A rebound in front. Fisher fans on a shot, and it's swatted out to the red line by Taylor Lampard. Can she win the race for the puck? She cannot. It's banked off the high wall by Risley. It caroms out to the red line at neutral, and it's swatted down the far corner. It's dug out by Catherine Tower. 9.20 remaining here in the first period. Shots on goal, 5-2 in favor of the Lynx over the Lakers. Grand Valley State, no official shots on goal in the last three minutes, and we get a whistle for an icing. Well, maybe here's their chance to get some offense going. You win this draw, establish a cycle, maybe get a couple nice chances on goal. They really haven't established much of a cycle in this whole tournament, so this could be their first chance to right here, and it'd be a good time to do it in a winner-go-home scenario. Face-off wins 5-3 to three in favor of Belleville, just over halfway through the first period. Make it 6-3, to three, the face-off won by Alicia Williams. It's gunned, attempting to gun it down the length of the ice, intercepted by Carlson, holds in the backhand, a centering feed looking for Brinkman, deflected wide, it's swatted off the stick of Reed, and she repossesses behind the net, Jamie Risley controls. Whips it out to the red line, trying to connect with Dakota McAlpiny. It's past her stick, and she goes out for a line change. Reed one-hands it out to Hallie Fisher. She gallops ahead past the neutral zone, but it's flicked forward and back by the Laker defense. Risley at the red line, tries to serve one in. It's off the stick of Carlson, and she gallops ahead. Three goals in this tournament. One touches it along to Allison Stapleton. She gets nudged off the puck, and now Dietmeyer. Trudges past the red line in the high slot. Dances past the defender, tries to go on the backhand. Flicked ahead by Carlson, but not out of the zone. And it's controlled far side by Mackenzie Dro. Skips past the defender at the top of the left circle. It's flicked ahead. Now, and Stapleton has it. Dances past the defender. That's Williams. Tries to deep past her a second time. Williams with the four check, the poke check. Controlling in the attacking zone right circle. It's flicked by. And a line change made by the Lynx. Eight minutes to go here in the first period. Still no score between Grand Valley State and Belleville. Top of the left circle, Alicia Williams driving below the goal line. Glides behind the net, pinched off the wall by Brianna Welgars. It's caroming out toward the right goal line. Dug out by Denton, flicks it back to Welgars, who pinches it and swats it high up the far wall. It's Katie Stelling for the Lynx, trying to play it back, but it's Sally Herr backhanding it off the high glass out toward the left point. It's tapped back in by Williams, rolling puck in the high slot and her clears the zone with seven and a half to go in the first period. Right now, this is exactly what you want to be happening if you're Grand Valley. It's still 0-0 in the first period. That's just what happened in the in the first period last time, or in game one, and game two, it was three nothing links early. BB shot deflected wide stick side, a rolling puck settled down in the high slot, a wrister deflected wide, Lampard tried to poke it free, and it's controlled by the Lynx down the right wing, Brooklyn Bell. A great chance by Taylor Lampard to unknot the game with seven minutes to go in the first period, but Hannah Stone, the best goaltender in the country in terms of save percentage and goals against average, that's too easy for the freshman. Yeah, but I think the Lynx might be starting to get nervous. This Laker team, they feel a lot more passionate, and like they want it more than they did in game two. And if you're the Lynx, that's not a good sign. Lots of body contact, no penalty called. And Quinn, just to give you some insight, this point in yesterday's game, we had four penalties, none in the first 13 and a half minutes. And penalties, I still think, could wind up being the story of this game, even if there aren't nearly as many. If one team takes a bad penalty, that could, that could, well, on cue, <laughs> Why do we start talking about it, Casey? A whistle, here we go. a whistle away from the puck. Alex Brinkman is gonna sit for cross-checking. And if you're Grand Valley, you were staying in it. It's still scoreless here. You were actually, the last two scoring opportunities were in the Lakers' favor. And now you put the Lynx on a power play where they were extremely effective yesterday. They scored their first three goals of the game yesterday in the first period on the women advantage. And all with one-timers. So I expect to see more one-timers in the, on this power play from the Lynx. Timeout take it on the ice. We'll take it as well. When we return, the power play for the Lynx tries to unknot the score. 0-0 zero, zero between Grand Valley State and Lindenwood University Belleville with 6.23 to go in the first period. You're watching the 2019 ACHA Women's Division I National Championships on the ACHA Network.
The 2019 ACHA oh, National wait, Championships are brought to you by Aries Sportswear, official merchandise partner of the ACHA. Howie's Hockey Tape, the official tape provider of the ACHA. And the City of Frisco. Six twenty-three remaining in the first period. No score between the Lakers and the Lynx, but Belleville on a power play. Two minutes for a cross-checking on Alex Brinkman. And when we were talking about it a bit earlier, four penalties in the first 13 minutes in yesterday's game of the first period. We have our first of the game, and it takes this Lindenwood power play back out out to the ice where they scored their first three goals of the game yesterday. For the Lakers, this is a huge kill. Could be good for momentum. It's Lindsey Gillis over to Ashley Dietmeyer. One of the four power play goals yesterday for Belleville. Her shot deflected from the right circle. Dug out by Tessa O'Connor. That was a great block from Sally Herr. And now the puck, I believe they're calling icing there. And that's, if you can win this draw and just pin it up along the boards 200 feet from your own goal, that's exactly what you want to do right now for the Lakers. Shots on goal, five to four. So not exactly the offensive outburst that we saw from yesterday's win for Belleville. A minute 21 remaining on the Brickman power play. The fifth year senior out of Rochester Hills, Minnesota. Face-off won by the Lakers, center point, a shot by Curie, deflected wide, it rolls behind the net. We go exactly what you want to do on this kill, pin it along the end boards, 200 feet from your goalie. Gillis muscles it to Dietmeyer. She scampers in the defensive zone, out to neutralize, surfing down the blue line, now the red line far side, Jamie Risley falls to the ice, no penalty call, Haley Curie digs it out the corner, swats it off the end wall, dancing for control of the puck near time, it's won by Tessa O'Connor at the right point for the Lynx, swats it behind the net, Curie the fifth year captain for the Lakers, unable to clear it, Williams left goal line, has it nudged off her stick, it rolls out to neutral ice, and nearly a breakaway for Carlson, it's kept in the attacking zone, Gillis a drive, it's deflected off a stick in front, and a big chance shorthanded for the Lakers, but some defense played by Belleville on the power play. Gillis, her shot to flex off a body in the slot. A spinning centering pass by Stelling trying to connect with Dietmeyer. It rolls wide and it clears the zone. So we went from that breakaway opportunity for Carlson, they got forked away, and then followed right up with a good push from the Lynx in their best cycle so far on this power play. Williams zooms at the right point, plays it ahead to Jessica Williams. Holds, plays it now to Michaela Reed. Her shot altered wide to the near corner. It's dug out by Denton and it's flipped down. A race for the puck. It's Rachel Smith nearly winning it, but Stone has to play it out of the crease. And just like that, we're back to five on five. The Lakers have killed off the first penalty of the game. That was a confident kill from the Lakers too. It does not look like a team that gave up three goals in the first on the power play last game. Allison Stapleton for Grand Valley State. Stretch pass looking towards Rachel Smith. It rolls down, and the Lakers making a quick line change. Eight to four, shots on goal. Belleville on top of the Lakers. Megan Beebe flips the puck back into the defensive zone, and we're going to get a hand pass. 3.48 to go here in period number one. As you said, Casey, shots are eight to four. It was five four. The Lakers were had had most of the momentum, but that power play for Belleville allowed them to get, to wind up now doubling shots on goal. And now we're going to get another late call. This one is going to go on Katie Galliaretti. She's going to sit in the penalty box, and just after Grand Valley State killed off a penalty, they're back on the penalty kill. A very late a whistle by the referee. The initial ruling was a hand pass. And now 10 seconds later, it's the power play unit back on the ice for the Lynx. I didn't see the call, but perhaps they determined she closed her glove around the puck. It's captain right circle, Mackenzie Drost. Too many players is the call. Straight away, Williams has her shot swallowed up by Allen. So that's a penalty on the coaching staff of the Lakers there. And have momentum in this game, you're, it's competitive. You're holding with the Lynx, a team that beat you by eight goals yesterday. And then you take a penalty for too many men on the ice. There's too many women on the ice. How much of that do you think can be attributed to just losing where you are in the game, knowing it's a do or die game and wanting to just get lines and people out of the ice just as soon as they try to skate toward the bench? It could be nerves and it could just be bad luck. 
and it could just be a lack of um, lack of awareness from the coaching staff. But one way or the other, now you got to kill off a penalty. You mentioned nerves. This is Doug Wickstrom's first trip to the national tournament with this Laker team. The puck is sent down. Carlson winning it. A close-ended shot from the right goal line. Gloved down by Stone to halt play. So a face-off comes in the Laker attacking zone shorthanded. Early on here, Lakers, that's the, this is now the second power play in a row for the Lynx. So the Lakers have forced a power play in the Lynx defensive zone. This is, this is how you kill a penalty. Lakers have been solid so far. And Quinn, we saw this yesterday with Liberty and Midland in the final game of day one. A turnover in the attacking zone. Taylor Lampar centering pass, high slot. A shot by Rachel Smith deflected wide. And here comes Dietmeyer. Trudging past the red line in the attacking zone, right circle. Dances in the high slot, drop feed, a shot by Delry, and a chest save made by Allen to halt play. Great play by Dietmeyer to hit the trailer, but Allen up to the task. It seemed to me that if she was moving, she struggled to make the save, but as long as she's set and squared up, you don't tend to beat Lauren Allen. Allen struggling with a torn meniscus injury that she suffered earlier in February, and you can only wonder what percent she's at health-wise. She was out yesterday after 43 minutes. A shot by Gillis, gloved down by Allen, short side for another face-off. But it was Emma Hembro finishing out the remaining 16 minutes of the game. She allowed five goals on 24 shots. So what are you trying to see from Allen and Nett to really determine how her ability and her agility is moving from side to side? I'm waiting to see that first one-timer and see how she responds to it. Below the left goal line, Delery centering pass, Gillis can't control, a one-timer floats over the near goal line and nearly passes the post, but it stays out. Gillis a shot, blocker the side, standing by Al, and it trickles out to the left corner boards. Delery holds, left circle, centering pass, one-timer by Gillis, the flex off a sprawling body of Connor Denton. It's still controlled by the Lynx, rolling puck in front, one-timer, Delery, and another save made by Allen. So far, the Lynx have probably had three or four one-timers, and every single one has been blocked out in front. You have to wonder if that's something that the Lakers talked about in between the last two games. Is that, okay, look, our goalie's struggling with getting across the one-timers. Usually, if you're, a goalie, you, if you're a goalie, you say, you take away the pass, I take away the shot. In this case, the players are taking away the shot and just letting the pass come across. Face-off won by the Lakers. They've won the last two here in the defensive zone on this penalty kill. It's Allison Williams' right goal line. Banks it off the wall to Walker, holding at the right point. Smacks it down low toward Michaela Reed. Holds top of the right circle. Wrists her through a couple bodies, blocked. Penalty and that'll kill. do it for the penalty. Now 0 for 2 are the Lynx. They were 3 for 3 at this point yesterday, so this Laker team starting to shore up. It's Williams holding right circle. A centering pass just past the stick of Mackenzie Trost. It rolls down to near half wall. Walker trying to center it from the hash mark. Deflected off the stick in front. It's Allison Carlson flipping it back the far side. Back to Carlson off the stick of Galli already. She trudges in the attacking zone. Holds in the backhand. Falls to an No penalty call. Dug out from the far corner. Carlson slugs it below the left goal line. It's blocked ahead by Drost. It's tapped back in. Controlled by Walker. She flicks it out toward neutral ice off a stick of Reed. No high sticking. And back in the Laker D zone. Allen sprawling out from the blue paint. She gloves it down with a minute to go in the first period. And an interesting play right there, instead of swatting it to the corner, she instead decides to go and just stop the action. That's That's been Lauren Allen this whole tournament, though. She's not hesitating. She, if that puck gets anywhere close to her, she just covers up and holds for a faceoff. Draw one by the Lakers. They hold it down to the right corner boards. Poke jack free by Dietmeyer, gliding behind the goal line. Holds in the backhand as she drifts toward the right hash mark. Straight away at the ACHA logo. Rich shot to a couple bodies wide of the net. It's dug out by Alexis Peterson, but not out of the zone. It's pitchfork to the far corner by Brinkman. Kept in left circle, Tessa O'Connor. Smack pass over the wards, Walker below the goal line. Her shot is stopped up by Allen. She makes another save, her 13th of the period. With that save right there and that shot right there, that's now eight unanswered shot from the, shots from the Lynx. It was five to four, now it's 13 to four in shots. It has been all Lynx, and granted there have been two power plays for them in that time frame. Grand Valley State has been outshot in each game this series. 41 shots by the Lynx in game one. 53 in game two yesterday. That's a tournament high for all eight teams who were in the women's division one tourney. It's wrapped down the far side, Sally Hoare. She can't clear it. 
fight for the puck at the right hash, and it's spun out toward the red line, dug out by Walker with 15 seconds remaining in the first. The freshman from Carberry, Alberta, pins it toward the near goal line. Her gets pinched hard to the net, and that's going to be a penalty. That's exactly what you want. Look at the energy from that Lakers bench. They know that this is the opportunity they needed. It's Alicia Williams skating to the box. And one of the longest tenured players on this Lynx team sits for checking. Excuse me, roughing at 19.55. Face off one by the Lynx. It's Gillis holding below the left goal line. Pins it to the wall and that'll do it for the first. But the Lakers will head into the second period on the woman advantage for a minute and 55 seconds. Quinn, there's no score on the board, but if you're Doug Wickstrom's side, this is a big win through the first 20. It is. You've stayed in this game, and now you're going to get to come out in the second on the power play. If the Lakers score first, it'll feel like game one all over again for the Lynx, watching to get back on their heels and definitely start to panic in this game. Some of the questions we had coming into play today, what was Lauren Allen's health? But through 20 minutes, the fifth year senior has faced 13 shots and she's been perfect. Yeah, she's been rock solid through one. They'll need her to keep that up through two more periods and the Lynx might, or the Lakers might just go on to take on the Flames. This is the first time in this tournament and in this series that we have had no score through the first period. Last 40 minutes should be a wild ride. But through the first 20, no score between the Belleville Lynx and the Grand Valley State Lakers. We'll step aside when we return. The second period, a do or die game. Game number three between Linden University, Lindenwood University, Belleville, and Grand Valley State. You're watching the 2019 ACHA Women's Division I National Championships on the ACHA Network.
Sometimes I fell, but I always got back up. Now when I'm skating, I feel like a rock, or maybe a race car, something really fast. It's my second favorite feeling. Scoring is my favorite. I think I like even more than birthday cake. things that come along that change the course of history. Inventions or developments that reshape society. They usually aren't appreciated at first. In fact, they're often scoffed at. What good will that be? Surely that can't be practical. But then, slowly, over time, the greatness of these achievements become manifest. Hi. Until one day, you ask yourself how you ever lived without them. That's the nature of turning points. They bring us to new roads and new heights. They open doors we never thought possible. So it's important that we go forward together. I'm here with Gina. That our growth okay. might not just benefit the great, but the good also. In small ways, and in grand ones. Stop. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. At Wilson Electronics, we push every day to amplify the power of communication, to connect those who love and those who cannot live without it. Dallas, Texas, in a stadium that has been sold out for months, the Cotton Bowl. Notre Dame leading 17 to 14. One 10 remaining in the game, and Texas will streak at quarterback. Streak gets to the second man for a touchdown for Texas. The 2020 Bridgestone NHL Winter Classic, an annual celebration of hockey's heritage. Tickets on sale April 23rd. The Cotton Bowl, New Year's Day. It's gonna be a classic. The Dallas Stars uh, you know, have put on camps like this, and, and we're just really trying to build hockey in the communities around Dallas. Learn to skate and play hockey for free at Children's Health Star Centers. All throughout DFW, kids ages 4 to 14 can join rookies programs presented by Lexus. Equipment is included and kids will get a free jersey to take home. For more information, visit DallasStars.com slash rookies.
For the first time all series, there is no score through the first 20 minutes between the Lindenwood University Belleville Lynx and the Grand Valley State Lakers. Do or die, winner moves on to the semifinals. Where they await Adrian College, either Adrian College or Liberty University. If it's the Lakers that move on, they will play the number one seed in Liberty. If it's Belleville, they take on the national runners-up last season in the Bulldogs. Casey Roll with you alongside Quinn Kuski. Quinn, first 20 minutes, you can make the case that even though it's a tie on the scoreboard and there's no score, it was an even bigger win for the Lakers who got shellacked yesterday. It is a bigger win for the Lakers because this feels like the first game. And the first game, the Lakers won. So this is exactly the situation you wanted to be in. You'd prefer to be up one nothing, of course. You know, why wouldn't you? But this is a whole lot better than game two, and they look like a different team out there. A different team and something that stands out. Lauren Allen, 13 shots, 13 saves in that first 20 minutes. We saw yesterday she was only able to last 43 minutes. How big has she been in the first 20 compared to what she looked like yesterday? She's looked fantastic so far, and I think a lot of it comes down to coaching adjustments as well. They're not letting those one-time looks get through, and it's helping her out a lot. And on offense right now, the Lakers only with four shots on goal, but they head into the second period on a power play for a minute 55. The first time Lindenwood's been shorthanded today, what did the Lynx have to do to kill off this penalty? They got to do the exact same thing the Lakers did. The Lakers took two penalties in that first period, and they were able to work that puck down both, on both penalties a couple separate times into the offensive end with possession, which is exactly what you want to do if you're on the kill. If you have possession of the puck on the complete other side of the ice from your own goalie, obviously the team on the power play is not going to score. And Quinn, something that we touched up upon briefly in the first period, we saw it yesterday with Liberty and Midland, and even our first game between Grand Valley State and Lindenwood, at times it looks like the team on the penalty kill is on the power play with how long they're able to maintain the puck in the attacking zone when they're down a skater. What does Liberty, I mean, excuse me, what does Lindenwood Belleville have to do to either A, maintain that like what they did in the first period when they're on the kill, and what does Grand Valley State have to do to avoid that here to begin the second? It all comes down to the faceoff. Right off, you're going to have a puck drop, and if Lindenwood can gain possession and they can find passing lanes and make crisp passes, they could kill off a whole penalty with possession. Faceoffs in favor of Belleville, 9 to 6 in the first period, but the Lakers ended the first with three consecutive face-off wins over the last minute and change. You miss anything over the ACHA National Tournament? Be sure to catch it on ACHA tonight, 11.30 p.m. Central Time. Recaps, analysis, game highlights, and expert opinions hosted by our own Matt Choma. Men's Division Three semifinals set to begin right here from the Comerica Center after this game between Lindenwood Belleville and Grand Valley State. If you miss anything, be sure to catch it on ACHA tonight. We've already got a back-to-back -back champion in the Division II pool in Florida Gulf Coast in the men's side. Liberty's looking very good in the women's Division I pool. I mean, there might be a good chance we're going to have two back-to-back -back champions in this national tournament. Not only two back-to-back -back champions, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a back-to-back -back rematch of Liberty versus Adrian College. But Miami, Ohio has looked really good. Crosley, back-to-back -back shutouts against Michigan State. But if you're Miami, Ohio, one goal is not going to cut it later on down the road. And what a tournament it's been for Ripley Crosley. The freshman net minor faced 53 shots from the Michigan State Spartans in the first two games, made 53 saves. And scarier thing is, Quinn, is that she was the backup goaltender for the most of the season for the Red Hawks. She was only appearing in nine games this year. And right off the bat, she started both games, and she has two wins under her belt. Reminds you of Missouri State, similar situation. The backup comes into this tournament as he was the hot hand and almost leads them to a win against Adrian College. They wound up losing one nothing. But Crosley, sometimes you got to ride the hot hand, and Crosley's definitely the hot hand in the case of Miami, Ohio. Well, the Lakers look to get hot on the power play. They're on for a minute, 55 seconds. Ashley Deepmeyer taking the face off against Allison Carlson to begin the second period. And off the tie-up, it's won by Belleville. It's Deepmeyer holding in the high slot shorthanded. Down toward the right corner boards. Holds in the back end as she drifts behind the net. Pinched toward the end boards by Breeland Tasker. Deepmeyer still holding. Pinned by a couple defenders now. The puck slapped up high into the air. And it's finally settled down by Sally Hoare. 
for the Lakers. This is exactly how you want to have a power play or a penalty kill go if you're the Lynx. Now it's pinned up along the boards. It's Carlson for Grand Valley State. Three goals in this tournament, including both yesterday for the Lakers in the 10-2 loss. It's Taylor Lampar smacking the puck off the end wall, centering pass deflected wide. Carlson in the high slot, spinning at the right circle, holds at the hash mark, now bottom of the circle of shot, deflects off the pad side of Stone. A rebound in front. Carlson tries to poke it free as she spills onto the ice, but Stone holds on to make the save 50 seconds into the second frame. Very good chance out in front there. Sometimes you got to work them greasy goals. That's what we saw the, the Liberty Flames doing yesterday. A lot of greasy goals, grimy stuff, just jamming at it at home out in front. And if that's how you got to score, so be it. They don't all have to be pretty as long as they go in. Carlson wins the draw, works it out to the right point. Haley Curie swats the puck to the right half wall to Taylor Lampar. Worked around the blue line. It's Kiri back to Lampar. Centering pass deflected wide. And Kiri holds right point. Fakes the shot. Swats it to Lampar. Centering pass. Kiri fans on a one-timer. And it clears the zone by Katie Fima. And Haley Kiri, the fifth-year captain, nearly with the best scoring chance we've seen throughout the entire game. Yeah, you, it, if the Lynx going to win this game, you'll need a one nothing or something like that, you know that Kerry will be sitting there thinking, what if, what if I got my stick on that puck? Carlson drags it in the attacking zone. High steps down the right circle. Lampar slap shot, deflected wide, blocker side, rolling down the far corner, dug out by her. The Colchester, Vermont native. Works it along the far side. Allison Stapleton nudged off the puck. A body falls behind the net. And Lindsey Gillis, the sophomore defenseman for the Lynx, blasts it off the high wall. It rolls down. Race for the puck, won by her. She backhands it on a flip to Tasker. And she works it out to neutral, and that'll do it for the penalty. The Lakers now 0 for 1 on the woman advantage. It's Brickman left circle, dragging below the left goal line, dancing behind the net, holding right goal line, a centering pass intercepted by Dietmeyer. She guns it down on net. Allen forced to stick it aside in the butterfly, and she resets for Breland Tasker. The sophomore alternate out of South Line, Michigan. Can't clear the zone. Bobby falls on the ice, and we're going to get another penalty on the Lakers. That is their third of the game. Yeah, and that's not a good penalty to take right there. You were about to gain possession of the puck anyway, then you trip up the opposing player, and Tasker will go to the box. Tasker goes for tripping. It comes at the 2 minute and 23 second mark. That's Tasker's third penalty of this tournament. The sophomore out of South Line, Michigan, sits in the box here in back-to-back -back games. Right point kept in by Jessica Walker. Swats it right hash mark. Michaela Reed, cross-ice pass to the left circle. Jamie Risley holds in the back end, now forehand. High slot centering pass, far side. Deflects off the skate of Reed. And we get a whistle. The post comes off. It's boring down the far side. But another backdoor centering pass. Just off coordination, Michaela Reed had a wide open net if she was able to get stick on Park. Yeah, if she could, could have gotten to it. The pass was a bit off the mark, but the passing lane is there. You've got to cut off that lane if you're Grand Valley. You can't be letting that pass even get through. Reed at the right hash. Pirouettes at the circle. Drives below the wall. It's sticked aside by Allen in the butterfly. It caroms out toward the near side. Katie Tima serves it out straight away. A shot by Walker. Caroms off a body, but it's... Rolling below the left goal line, Tima controls again. The Adelaide Australia aided. Swats it below the goal line. It's Alicia Williams, the team leader in power play goals with six. Forks it to the left point, Jamie Risley. Swats it back to Williams. Pivots at the goal line, holds at the left dot straight away. Walker a shot, deflected wide, nearly crosses the goal line on the deflection. It caroms to the near wing, Katie Lacusta back to Williams with a minute to go on the penalty. If that deflection had been on front. Williams, a centering pass, they score! It's Lindsey Gillis on the power play. Her tournament leading third power play goal. And it's a 1-0 lead for Belleville. This is why you have to stay out of the box. You know, they killed off two, which if you're the Lakers, that's good. But you're not killing off a third in a row. It's way too much to ask of that team and that penalty kill. And the, the Lynx have scored, now they're up 1-0 and already up 17 to six in shots as well. The Lakers are back on their heels and they need to get one in a hurry. Gillis, a sophomore from Edmonton, Alberta, had two power play goals yesterday in the win. 
He strikes for the first goal of the game. And in this tournament, Quinn, the team who scores first has won both games. The puck rolls behind the net of Allen. It's swirled out toward the right half wall. Rolls behind the net. Breland Tasker lays it ahead for the Lakers, but not out of the zone. It's finally forked out to neutralize by Alex Brinkman. It's pinched behind the net. Monica Rayo plays it for the Lakers. It's pinched off the high glass. It rolls out to the red line, and it's the goal score moments ago. Lindsey Gillis swatting one down for an icing. Perhaps here, if you're the Lakers, you've got some decently tired legs on the ice for the Lynx. Maybe you can win this draw, force some zone time, push the action a little bit, try to get something going here. Shots on goal, 17 to six for the Lynx over the Lakers. It's Allison Carlson. The team leader in goals this tournament, and the senior out of Marquette, Michigan, taking the face off for the Lakers. It's won by the freshman, Dakota McAlpiny. The Brockville, Ontario native tries to clear the zone, but he get a whistle for an offside as Carlson entered. And now we get a hand pass. It's a hand pass. Yeah, it was kept at the blue line by the Lakers, but it was gloved down to a line mate. They play the puck, but it, I mean, it's the same thing as an offside. If you let the puck come out and brought it back in, exact same situation, whether it be one or the other. Carlson taking a face off against Dietenweyer, and the captain wins it for the Lynx. A clearing attempt fanned on by Risley. It bounces off of the body of Carlson, and now here comes Dietenmeyer, holding below the left circle, centering pass, far side. A flip shot off the stick of Walker, just over the crossbar. And a possible chance for the second goal of the game for the Lynx, a couple inches just over top. Yeah, that was, that was close, and the Lynx are starting to click here, and this is not good news if you're Grand Valley State. It was a period in the first of defense and goaltending, but now it's Belleville taking most of the scoring chances, but Grand Valley State right now on the power play. It's Ashley Dietmeyer sitting in the box for interference. And here's the opportunity you needed. Down one nothing in the second. Pretty much they're, they're getting outplayed right now in this second period. So this is your momentum builder. You get one here and draw even, everything swings back into your favor. Four minutes and 37 second mark. That is the third penalty on Dietmeyer this tournament. It's the second power play chance for Grand Valley State. They win the faceoff. Right point, Haley Curie swats it to Alex Brinkman, right goal line. Pinned to the wall by Jamie Risley. Works it back to Curie, right hash mark. Banks it to Brinkman. Holds in the backhand as she walks up the boards. Cradles with a righty hockey stick. A centering pass to flex off of Adi. Trying to connect with Rachel Smith and it clears the zone. 135 to go on the Grand Valley State power play. 17 shots for the Lynx to six for the Lakers. It rolls down and Connor Denton plays it. The transfer out of McKendree University. The junior standing at five foot five, 150 pounds. Quarterbacks the offense, a stretch pass to Kiri cross ice. It's swatted back into the Laker defensive zone off the stick of Ash of Mackenzie White. Only four shots faced by Hannah Stone to Netminder for the Lynx. Right half boards, Alex Brickman pinned to the wall by a couple Lynx defenders, and we get a whistle because the puck was just halted and stopped, and we get a face off. Both players down there trying to rip it free. And the ref, and oh, we had another third player there was laying on top of the puck. That was Alex Brinkman falling down in that pile and was laying on top of it. So that will lead to the faceoff coming out in the center. Neutralized draws. Carlson taking the faceoff against Dakota McAlpiny. And the draw, it's won by McAlpiny. It's flipped out as far as the blue line. O'Connor can't fully dump it behind the net and now Carlson with 45 seconds to go on the power play. Centering pass into the slot. Stapleton a shot, stick the side to the far corner by Stone. Carlson holds on a backhand blow the right goal line. Has a power play goal this tournament. Stretches it far side. Arister deflects off a body in front, bounces over the crossbar. Centering pass off the stick of Stapleton looking for Carlson and Stone makes the save the halt action. 
Little bit of momentum here for the Lakers. They're starting to build up opportunities. That was three really quick shots there on the power play, and that could be exactly what they need. 26 seconds to go in the women advantage. Both penalties for the Lynx have been in the second or have stretched into the second frame. Carlson wins the draw. Right circle, her a shot to flex off a stick. Megan Beebe tried to redirect one on net. It's rifled off the wall by Katie Thema and down. Now 14 seconds to go in the power play. A scrap for the puck, Dakota McAlpany for the Lynx wins it. She holds shorthanded, trying to kill off some time, but Katie Stelling has it swatted off her stick. Breland Tasker controls. Carlson for the Lakers, gliding in the attacking zone. Right circle, her shot altered wide. And it's Tima playing it along for Dietmeyer, just, kind of the, just fresh out of the box. Holding at the left circle, drags in the backhand, spinning. Arister in the slot, blocked. But Dietmeyer recollects her own miss. Holding left goal line, glides up the half wall, plays it across to Stelling. She drives behind the net, gliding on the backhand. Pirouettes up the half wall, right point, Katie Lacusta. Her shot deflects off a slot. A stick in the high slot, that was Dietmeyer. She goes to the bench. The puck is bounced up off the high wall in the high slot. Tima a shot, just skitters wide over the glove side. Kept back in, it's a centering feed by Flaherty trying to connect with Risley. It rolls past the stick of Megan Beebe. She plays it ahead and down, it's an icing. And right off, coming on off of the um, power play, the Lakers, things go right back to their defensive ends. Lynx picking up right where they left off. 17 to 19 shots on goal. A battle that the Lynx have won throughout this entire series. Off the tie up, it's pushed forward by BB out to the point, but it's kept in Lacusta and it's swatted out to the red by Brianna Welgar. Zane, quick check. She has it in the attacking zone, right circle, falls to the ice. And now we get a whistle for a penalty. Opportunities are plenty for the Lakers. They've got to capitalize on one of them. It's just a matter of time. I said the three, killing three in rapid succession was too much for the Lakers. It might be the same case for the Lynx. So Katie Stelling goes to the box for hooking. A great shorthanded chance by Grand Valley State. And Quinn, we've seen that twice now today when you're shorthanded drawing penalties. We've seen that twice this tournament, I should say. We saw it yesterday with Liberty and with Midland. The puck rolls behind it at Allison Carlson. Holds at the left goal line. A centering pass to flex off a body. Taylor Lampard, the intended target. It's worked up to the right point. Sally Herr keeps it in. Holds in the backhand right circle. A shot to flex off the stick of Carlson. And it's gunned down by Tima. Allen forced to play it. Probably the most aggressive play I've seen from Allen this whole tournament right there. Tried to play it all the way to the offensive end. Third penalty on the Lynx. Grand Valley State 0 for 2 on the power play here this afternoon. The Lynx are 1 for 3. It's Carlson centering it into the high slot. Lampard can't connect. It's her straightaway. Fans on a centering pass. It's deflected by Dietmeyer. And now she has a possible breakaway chance. Good back check by her. She pins it to the wall. Scrumming for control of the puck. Her fishing for it down to near wing. BB pokes it out to the red underneath the stick of Carlson. It's swatted back in by Drost. Reverse back around over the wards. Taylor Lampard. Just about nine minutes gone here in the second period. 40 seconds on the woman advantage for the Lakers. A shot by Lampard, the flex off his stick. A rolling puck settled down by Connor Denton. Did not play in yesterday's game for the Lakers. Inserted into the lineup by head coach Doug Wickstrom. We get a whistle and another hand pass. 26 seconds remaining on this power play for the Lakers. They've done absolutely nothing with it. And due to that, it's going to wind up becoming a momentum builder for the Lynx. Fans, if you miss anything, be sure to catch it on ACHA tonight. Recaps, analysis, highlights, and more. All on ACHA tonight, and Quinn, it's now the third time today, another delayed penalty, and this one's gonna go on Megan Beebe. These penalties are taking forever to be called, and I, to be honest, I don't understand why it's happening like this. 
So it's four on four hockey for 24 seconds. Face off one by the Lynx. Bench violation is called. So we saw too many men on the ice. That was our first major delayed penalty. And now it's a bench violation here for the second. So both delayed calls have been away from the puck and away from the action. I don't know what's going on with Grand Valley State, but those are that's now two extremely avoidable penalties, and you can't have that in a win-or-go-home game. It's Lindsey Gillis on the power play. Her shot from the high slot deflected wide. She scored a moment ago here in the second. It's Melissa Delry. Had a power play goal yesterday. Risley back to Gillis, top of the left circle. Cycles, cross-ice pass. One timer off the stick of Delry. It flicks wide over the backhand side, kept in. At the right point, Risley into the high slot, driving in Gillis. Her shot, she scores! Top cheddar, Lindsey Gillis with back-to-back multi-goal games, putting the Lynx on top 2-0. Gillis with just a gorgeous shot in the top left corner, right where Mama keeps the peanut butter, and it's 2-0 Lynx. Had one multi-goal game in the regular season. She's got two coming in back-to-back -back games. And to account for both the goals in this game. She's trying to put the dagger into the heart of the Lakers, and she might do it single-handedly. Gillis with her tournament leading fourth goal. Face off one at center by Dakota McAlpany. It's flipped back in by Tessa O'Connor behind the net. First to the puck for the Lynx, it's Michaela Reed holding at the right hash, pinned to the wall. Carlson pokes it out, but as far as the blue line, Katie Lacusta plays it behind the net. McAlpany holds on the backhand, centering pass, just nearly crossing the goal line. It was a rolling puck, but the Lakers controlling. They cleared out to neutral. Carlson flicks it to the red line. In the high slot, a shot by Rayom deflected wide. Carlson dances past the fender, drags in the backhand, below the left goal line, centering pass, looking back for Carlson that time, Rayom, no. Back to Carlson, it's swatted out straight away. Dancing past the defender, Monica Rayom, her shot fluttering wide, glove side. It's dug out by the near corner by Hallie Fisher, but not out of the zone. Rayom, another shot right point, easily paddled aside to the far corner by Hannah Stone. The Lakers unable to keep the zone. A centering pass far side. Alexis Peterson couldn't connect with Haley Kieran. Belleville two for four on the power play. Lindsey Gillis here in this tournament has converted on four of the nine power play goals for Belleville. The puck rolls down, not the stick of Fisher behind the net, no icing. As a quick line change made by the Lynx. Far side, it's Delry flipping it off the high wall. Puck smacked in by Lacusta. The Lakers trying to clear the zone. It's Rachel Smith ushering out to neutral lies. Tessa O'Connor regains down the right circle. Centering pass into the high slot. A backhand shot by Mackenzie Drost as she falls to the ice. No penalty. It's forked back by Hurd. Below the right goal line, she... Pirouettes ahead, falls to the ice, and now we're going to get a penalty. This one's going to go on the Lynx. And if you're the Lakers, this has to be the one. You can only get so many opportunities before you start to mentally give up. And they, this is yet another power play. This will be their fourth. You have got to get one here. This will be the fourth penalty on the Lynx. And it's going to be Mackenzie Drost sitting. You see right here in front, Michaela Reed trying to argue with the official on behalf of Drost, but to no avail. It's five on four. Here for the Lakers. Hooking the call. It comes with 7.51 to go. Face off one by the Lynx. They can't clear the zone. Right point, a shot by Delry deflected wide. Pirouetting out to the red line. It's flicked back in by Hallie Fisher. 12.08, and the penalty is holding here in the second. Five penalties here in the second period. Our series high for calls in the second frame was nine, and that was yesterday. We had eight in game one, nine in game two. And with 7.15 to go here in game three, this is our fifth penalty. I, 
it, for whatever reason, it seems like the second period is the one where the penalties just start to get outrageous, and it carries over to the third more often than not. And we'll see what happens in this one, but both teams, they just got to play disciplined hockey. Even if it's like, if you can't go to the next series, and let's say the Lakers pull this game out, you go against the Flames, one of the least penalized teams in all of women's D1 hockey, and you start taking penalties like this, you're going to get blown out. Sally Hur gets the puck deflected wide. It's Dietmeyer, possible uh, short-handed chance on a odd man rush. He slows it down, glides it behind the left goal line, holds in the backhand, cycles it off the boards. Nobody there. Pinning for control of the puck, and Welgar's controls. In the Division I women's tournament, 10 players have scored a power play goal. Carlson nudged off the puck. Seven are in this series. So out of the 10 players to score on the women advantage, seven of them are featured in this series. Five for Belleville and two for Grand Valley State. I guess when you spend the majority of the game on with special teams, it's bound to have that kind of a stat line. The other three, one of them is for Miami and the other two are for Liberty. Pulling down the left half wall, it's Rachel Smith, a Naperville, Illinois native. Reverses direction over towards Allison Carlson. Back to Smith. Carlson holding at the left hash mark. Plays it to the left point. Cross ice pass to Carey. Right circle, a shot deflected wide. Rebound in front. Sprawling bodies, but off the stick of Smith. It skitters down the glove side. It's still 2 0 as the power play expires. And we get another penalty right after Dros comes out of the box. A lot of momentum here for the Lakers. That was an incredible scoring opportunity. And the second their power play ends, they go right back on another one. So perhaps this is it for the Lakers. I keep saying it's got to be it. We're getting to the point now where you've got to start to stress out if you're that Laker coaching staff. You're down 2 nothing. You're not doing anything on the power play. But perhaps this could be the one. As soon as Dros steps out of the box, Katie Lacusta, the senior out of New Westminster, British Columbia, sits for roughing. Both teams are sent to their bench to talk with their respective coaches. Kat Hanna and the all-women's coaching staff for Linden University, Belleville. Doug Wickstrom in his first year as head coach for Grand Valley State, talking with his Lakers, who trail by two. The big guns on the ice for the Lakers. Allison Carlson has two power play goals in this tournament. He takes the face off against Ashley Dietmeyer. Face off one Dietmeyer, but it's pushed forward out to the right point. Kept in by Haley Curie, the fifth year captain. Pins the puck to the wall, scrub for it. And Dakota McAlpany able to clear the zone out to neutral ice. The ref blows her whistle because of how the puck was stopped and how it was Pin to the wall. Face off will take place at neutral ice. To the Lakers, you want to win this draw and get that puck in deep as fast as you can. If you're Grand Valley State, knowing that the third period has been a big strong suit for the Lynx, it's desperation time. Centering pass deflected wide. Backhand shot on a feed by Carlson looking for the Lampard. It rolls out to the far wing and down. Quinn, not to jump out to an early preview, but this season, Belleville has a shot from Dietmeyer, whistles high and catches the glass. They've won 19 games this season. 18 of the 19 wins in the regular year have come after leading through two periods. A shot from Carlson, paddle aside by Stone over toward the near corner boards. It rolls below the right goal line, pinched up by O'Connor, swats it off the high wall, controlling for the Lakers, it's Breland Tasker. Back to Carlson. Flips it back to Tasker, gliding at the right point. A body in front, deflected wide, rebound in front. Another shot, no. A backhand feed, wide open net. A shot off the stick of Smith, and a sprawling save made by Stone. The freshman out of Killingworth, Connecticut, is killing off the penalty, and another phenomenal save. It was just mishandled out in front, and if that comes off immediately from the stick, you're going to see it right here. The puck's going to kick free on the back door. The net is wide open for Lampard. She just couldn't corral it in time. And somehow, Smith's able to dive over and get a piece of it. The save of the tournament keeps it a 2-0 lead for the Lynx with just under five minutes to go in the second frame. 
the nation's leader in save percentage and goals against average. Facing only her 15th shot of the night, but that one arguably the biggest of this series. It's Sally Hur controlling for the Lakers with 25 seconds to go on the power play. Stretches one to Alex Brickman, gains the zone outside. Right dot nudged off the puck. It's swatted off the wall by Melissa Delry and Quinn. This is something we've been just seeing over and over and over again with this Lakers power play. Yeah, they get a few chances here and there, but as a whole, they just haven't been able to bring the action to the links. Here's Megan Beebe, a possibility, dragging in the slot, and we're going to get a penalty. It's going to go on the links. Hooking is the call, and with 3.51 to go, another Lakers power play. So, Casey, do you think in that situation, could you argue a penalty shot there? I was just about to ask you. BB was streaking to the net. You had Risley, who's going to the box behind her. We've seen a penalty shot this series. No call has been made. Lindsey Gillis is actually the one who's going to go sit in the box. So the goal scored tonight for the Lynx with their first penalty, but we're going to remain on a power play. No penalty shot. And if you're the Lynx, you have to be taking a huge sigh of relief right now. Oh, for sure. You'd much rather be shorthanded for two, which you've proven time and time again that you can shut down than potentially give up a penalty shot. Gillis sits in the box. Two minutes for hooking. The second hooking penalty of the game, a shot on a deflection by Carlson, deflects off the stick of Lampar. She controls right circle, a shot by Curie, deflected wide, and it's gunned down the length of the ice, and Allen forced to play it. With 3.23 to go, Seven penalties have occurred here in the second frame. Too shy of the series record for the second. It's McCulpany for the link, shorthanded, holding at the left hash, dragging up the half wall. It's Pocek free. Curie, the captain for the Lakers, wins it behind the net. She quarterbacks the offense. The fifth-year senior from Washington, Michigan, oh falls, and we get another penalty. We're going to be five on three unless Grand Valley State scores here. It's chipped in by Lampard behind the net. She falls to the ice, holds on the backhand, plays it across to Carlson, right hash mark, pitch forks it up the wall, holding right point, Connor Denton, cross ice pass to the left circle, a shot deflects off a body in front, and we're going to have five on three for 45 seconds. Tripping is the call on the links. You have to get one here if you're if you're the Lakers. You absolutely have to. This is your best opportunity of the game. It probably will be your best opportunity of the game. 2.36 to go in period number two. You want to get at least one, possibly two here. If you could go into the third even, this would be very interesting. So the Lakers will be on the man women advantage for a minute. 44 seconds, the faceoff won by the Lynx. Rolling puck in the high slot, Megan Beebe, who drew the first penalty on this power play holds. Slap shot, right circle, the flex off the stick of Katie Tima, and she clears the zone. Grand Valley State entering today on the power play, Quinn. One for 12. Left circle, Beebe a shot, it rings off the pipe, and it skitters toward the near corner. It's Hoor, cross ice pass to Beebe, holding below the left circle, a shot. Behind the net, it's dug out by Connor Denton. Plays it straight away to her at the ACHA logo. Denton holds right circle a shot. The flex off her body as she whipped on it and clears the zone. But Megan Beebe dialing up a Howard through that hits off the crossbar. We're back to five on four now as well. A minute, eight seconds on the Laker power play. Gillis out of the box and on the kill. Left circle, a shot by Brinkman to flex it to the mesh. Halfway through the power play here for the Lakers. One minute to go, 136 to go in period number two. We're looking at that shot right off the far side post. A great chance for BB. Just couldn't quite make it happen. That had to be the loudest post hit that we've heard all tournament. That was a loud ring. That could be echoed possibly to the lobby. Yeah, that, that hurts if you're that hurts your heart if you're BB. So close to bringing this game within one, cutting this lead in half for the for, for the Lynx and just not quite able to make it happen. 
Uh, I think we have a timeout taken by the Lakers. No, so we're getting a review with the referees are stepping into review. Maybe they're looking to see if that shot from BB went in. Now you can have it as a goal if it went underneath the poster behind it as long as the puck crossed the goal line. That's how you can rule it as a goal. So we've had big power play chances, shots that hit off of posts, and now our first major review of this series. We'll see if we can get another replay of the shot by BB here momentarily, but when this review, it's longer than a typical review would be, so my, the only question here is... Here's your replay. It's so fast, it's hard to really tell. It's an absolute rocket. And looks as though the Lakers seem to think that it's not gonna count as they're coming out towards the faceoff circle. Megan Beebe, the junior out of Livonia, Michigan, a career high seven goals this season. Product of Victoria Honda and the Copywear programs, very High profile down programs here. in the state of Michigan. And now we get another look at it. Looks like it just went off that top corner, top left corner, and we have no goal. And you saw the reaction of BB on the replay. She held her head up knowing that she had just missed two. So, but we remain on the power play for a minute. It's Allison Carlson taking the face off against Ashley Dietmeyer, one of the more frequent face off battles in this series. Carlson wins it, drives it below the left circle, deflected but controlled by Lampard. Back to Beebe, who was almost credited with the goal moments ago. Slap shot, the flex off of Bobby in front. It's off the skate of Risley. Beebe with it, left circle. Her shot deflected wide, rolls out to the high slot. Sally Her keeps it in her drive, the flex off the pad of Hannah Stone, directed to the far corner, and it's swatted out to the red line by Risley. Enough time for one more rush here. Half a minute to go on a woman advantage. It's Carlson flipping it into the zone, and it's Gillis dying it down, booted down, but Dietmeyer holds below the right goal line. Drags on a backhand behind the net. Dug off the puck by Connor Denton. Bodies fighting for it at the left hash mark. Rolling behind the net, Sally Hurd controls. She reverses direction, and Denton controls. The puck on a cross ice feed, the flex off the stick of Reed. Body falls to the eyes. It's kept in by Lampar with 35 seconds. Here comes BB entering the zone outside. Left circle, a shot. Whistles wide, glove side of the net. And that's now two chances in a span of a minute and a half. BB has just missed. Back to even strength here with 20 ticks left in the frame. It's rimmed around the near wall. Mackenzie Drost. At neutral ice, tries to flip it forward. Here's McAlpany. Two on one on man rush. Cross ice pass to Reed. Her shot. Glove down by Allen. A possible game save made, a game saving save made by the fifth year senior. It remains 2 0. Well, the score line's 2 0. We also need to key in on the fact this is the closest the shot count has been in this entire series 20 to 17 in shots. And the Lakers, it's not due to lack of opportunities. They've spent this entire period just about on the power play. They just haven't been able to score. Off the tie-up, it's the Lakers controlling. Allison Stapleton pins it to the wall to kill off the remaining three seconds, and that'll do it for the second. A pair of power play goals by Lindsey Gillis, the sophomore from Edmonton, with her tournament-leading fourth goal of the ACHA Division I Women's National Championships. A lone difference, 2-0. The Lynx on top of the Lakers through 40 minutes. And Quinn, a number that we touched up upon earlier, 18 and 0 are the Lynx when leading through two periods. Yeah, it's a team that's not used to playing from behind. And we really, that's what we saw in game one. They got behind early. It's not a situation that they're comfortable being in. And they wound up losing. There's the a Lakers. phenomenon. Right? So now if you're the Lynx, you're in the situation that you're comfortable with. If you're the Lakers, it's not over but you've got to come out fiery in this third period. Hannah Stone faced nine shots in that second frame for the Lynx in net, but a couple big saves, including one that nearly crossed the goal line on a wide open net. The freshman of Killingworth, Connecticut, showing why she's probably the best goaltender in the country. Yeah, Hannah Stone stood tall in, in that period, 
and she'll have to do so again in the third, especially if the Lynx keep taking penalties like they are right now. So through 40, it's 2-0 in favor of the Lynx over the Lakers. A pair of Lindsey Gillis goals, hoping to will Lindenwood University Belleville to the semifinals. We'll step aside the third period coming up next on the ACHA Network for the Women's Division I ACHA National Championships. There's a phenomenon at Grand Valley State University that is making a lasting impact on our students, the state of Michigan, and beyond. It's called the Laker Effect. Lakers understand that one person can make a significant impact. Together, we know we can do even more. That's the Laker Effect. There's a phenomenon at Grand Valley State Hockey heads are special, which is why we protect them with a helmet designed, built, and tested to endure real-world hockey impacts. Skating was hard at first. Sometimes I fell, but I always got back up. Now when I'm skating, I feel like a rock or maybe a race car, something really fast. It's my second favorite feeling. Scoring is my favorite. I think I like even more than birthday cake.
Final 20 minutes of action and a Lindenwood University Belleville Lynx. That much closer to another trip to the national semifinals, but Grand Valley State tries to keep the Cinderella story alive, trailing by two here in the final period of play, game number three. Casey roll with you alongside Quinn Kuski. Quinn, it was a second period of missed opportunities for the Lakers, and at this point, you're thinking, how much can they dig themselves out of the hole they put themselves in? Well, if the Lynx keep taking penalties, you just gotta capitalize on the power play, which I mean, clearly is easier said than done in this one. They haven't done so yet in this game, but if there was ever a time to wake that power play unit up, this third period's gonna be it. Alicia Williams wraps it down the far wing. It's corralled by Allison Stapleton for the Lakers, smacking sticks out in the red line. It's pitchforked up to neutral, gliding back ahead, Jamie Risley. Right hash mark center, and pass it to the ice line. A shot by Williams to flex high up off the glass. That one caught the stick of Monica Rayome. It rolls behind the net, and Breland Tasker, the alternate of South Line Michigan controlling. She works it up the near wall. Pitched back in by Jessica Walker, and down the far side, controlled by Tasker as the Lynx make a line change. The whistle and a stoppage in play down the far wing with 46 seconds gone. I believe the officials thought that puck had skipped up into the open door of the bench. It had not, and we'll have a puck drop here. If you miss any ACHA action, be sure to catch ACHA tonight on ACHAHockey.org. Full recaps, highlights, and analysis featured. Oh, no, it's a penalty. It's a Lynx penalty. It's a Lynx penalty, but if you want to catch up on some analysis of these penalties in game number three, Matt Kilma will have that and expert analysis. I think our own Quinn Kuski is the featured guest for women's division one. Now, back-to-back -back days, that must... Matt, I swear, Matt must really like to have you on back-to-back -back days. I have to go through the history books. Is that the first time Matt's had somebody on back-to-back -back days on ACHA well, tonight? If I'm on for back-to-back -back days, it's news for me. So I haven't heard word on who's on it yet tonight for Women's D1. But if Matt wants me on it, I'll more than happily do it again. Well, the power play unit for the Lakers is 0 for 6 today in the second period. They're 0 for 8 in total. It's lobbed down by Ashley Dietmeyer, and it's corralled by Connor Denton. The transfer from McKendree University in her junior year. A rolling puck at neutral, corralled by Allison Carlson, just past her stick, Lindsey Gillis, who has both goals today for the Lynx, both on the power play. Slaps it across to Dietmeyer, who guns it down, but not behind the goal line. It's Denton controlling. Two points in 24 games this season for Denton. She high steps past the red line in the neutral zone. It rolls back and it's corralled by Alex Brinkman. Holding on the backhand past the blue line, the puck scatches off a couple sticks. Gillis behind the net, works it out to Jamie Risley. She banks it off the high wall, controlled by Haley Curie at the right point, delayed offside. And it's Michaela Reed. Shots on goal 20 to 17 in favor of the Lynx. The least amount of shots they put up in this series is 41. So if you're Grand Valley State, you're looking at it saying, they only have 20 shots through two periods. Here's a shot by BB over the crossbar and catches the glass, who missed out on a very quality scoring opportunity in the second frame. Actually, two scoring chances in the second, which possibly could have made it 2-2, but we're still 2-0. Yeah, and it's the same story from last game as we've had in this game. It's just missed opportunities for the Lakers. They've had options, they've had chances, they just haven't capitalized. Lauren Allen gloves it down with a streaking Jessica Walker coming in. The freshman out of Carberry, Alberta, Walker, stands at 5'10", 180 pounds, the second tallest defenseman on this Lynx team, only behind Lindsey Gillis. Four power play goals for Gillis, leads the tournament. Face-off controlled by the Lakers. It's Sally Herr working up the left corner boards. And the Lynx have killed off the power play. The Lakers now 0 for 9 on the woman advantage. Out of the box, it's Williams. Below the left goal line, dragging. Now holding on a forehand near side. Jams it up to the boards. Works it and grinds it along to Megan Lugar. She gets the puck nudged free. Her a stretch pass far side. Taylor Lampar flashing sticks in the blue line, but it's forked free, and Williams gazelles ahead. At the left circle, dashes past the defender, holds behind the goal line, centering pass on a spinning feed, no, behind the side again, another shot, shrugs off the shoulder of Allen, it works down the far corner, and it's controlled by Monica Rayon. 
the lefty. Saucer pass out to the near wing. Controlling Rachel Smith. Pass the blue line. A centering pass deflected wide and offside is the call. And that'll do it for yet another Laker power play. You know, I said it at the top of the third. You've got to capitalize on all these opportunities. The Lynx keep feeding you woman advantages, but they aren't doing anything with them. There were five penalties on the Lynx yesterday. Seven in game one for Belleville. Nine in game three. So if my math is correct, that's a total of 20 penalties as a sprawling Allen makes the save. And if the Lynx can hold on in this one, you can't take that many penalties against any of these other top-end teams in this tournament and expect to win a game. And you mentioned the possible matchups, depending on how this game goes. If Belleville wins, they will play Adrian College, who finished as the national runner-up last season. And if it's a win for Grand Valley State, as a centering pass in front, Hallie Fisher tried to poke it past, but a save made by Allen. Grand Valley State will play the number one team in the country, and that's Liberty, who's only lost once this season. Yeah, Liberty has been incredible this season. But if, if um, Grand Valley loses, it'll be Miami, Ohio against, against Liberty. And Crosley said in her interview on ACHA Tonight last night, she wants to play Liberty. That's the matchup that she's craving for. She, she, they tied in their last matchup, so that should be a very interesting game. Only three ties for Liberty this season. Ripley Crosley, the freshman goalkeeper, goal tenor for La Miami Red Hawks, who has been flat out phenomenal. 53 shots and 53 saves in their two game sweep against Michigan State. The backup goalkeepers, goaltenders in this tournament, not only for men's, but for women's as well, have been the national storyline. A backup goalkeeper, goaltender, and Joshua Bykowski winning with Minot State. And now if Miami of Ohio can go on a big run, that could be them as well. The Red Hawks with three national championship titles to make it four with a big run. Megan Beebe sashays into the attacking zone. A shot from the left point. Swaggered aside by Hannah Stone toward the near corner. It's played out by Jamie Risley with five minutes gone here in the third period. Banks it off the near wall. First to the buck, Tessa O'Connor. She lost it off her backhand. It rolls at the right point. Scrumming for control of the buck. A couple of links skaters. It's Jamie Risley flicking it behind the net, and it's controlling by Stapleton. Allison Stapleton, a product of the University of Liggett School in the state of Michigan. She moves it past the red line, falls to the ice, but a career, one of the best careers in Michigan State High School. It's Stapleton, a shot deflected wide, nearly crosses the goal line. Carlson tried to poke it free, but Stapleton in the high slot nearly pokes one home. And there it shot, is! A rebound, they score! It's Sally Hoare on a deflection from the point, and we're back within one. Opportunity after opportunity, and finally it pays off for the Lakers. 2-1 now. The senior out of Colchester, Vermont, has cut it to one, and the Lynx lead this half. And that's a momentum swing, and then some right there. That puck winds up in the back of the net. You can feel the energy even from the other side of the rink from that Laker bench. That actually looked like deflected off of Allison Carlson. We await the official goal score. Who else would it be? Here's O'Connor, her shot chested down by Allen. Rachel Smith with the goal, number 23. Allison Carlson and Monica Rayom the assists. Comes at 5.57. Face off one by the Lynx, it's clearing past the blue line and it's controlled by Tessa O'Connor. She takes a huge hit, the red line, no penalty call. Dashing past the defender in the attacking zone, Mackenzie Droz puts on the brakes at the left hash mark, backhand centering pass deflected wide. Jessica Walker tries to play at high slot, rolling puck. Stashed to the far side, Rayom flips it ahead towards Galliaretti. She pitchforks it behind the net. 
First to it, Sally Herr for the Lakers. It rolls behind and now down the near side. Flipping out to the red line, it's the captain, Ashley Dietmeyer, and the Lynx make a line change. So life for the Lakers. With just over 13.20 to go. If you're the Lynx, now you really need to stay out of the box because it's only a one-goal game now. Michaela Reed, the Chilliwack, British Columbia native, pins the puck behind the left goal line. It's Melissa Delry now controlling, rolling puck, dug out by Reed. Reverses direction, trying to connect with Delry, the flex wide, clashes off a couple sticks. Taylor Lampar flicks it out to neutral. Reed. One of two players from Chilliwack on a turnover. Here's BB holds in the backhand, a shot. Sprawling pad save made by Stone at the flex to the air goal line. Still two to one. Big save made by the freshman. Rolling down the right goal line, a sprawling shot by Smith. The flex out, and it's ushered out to neutral ice. A penalty going to be called. It's going to go on to Lakers. It's Williams gliding below the right goal line on the backhand. Her shot deflected wide. Williams holding her hands up. She had still had control of the puck when the whistle was blown. Uh, Williams is unhappy, not because of that, but because she just took a penalty as well. So we're going to have matching minors. Yeah, as Williams came around the corner, she was defended by Carey, I believe is who it was and she pulled the stick out of Carey's hands to prevent her from playing defense, and so now we'll go to four on four. The break that Grand Valley State desperately needed. And Quinn now with the speed of the Lakers, this actually might be something you want. Less players on the ice means more move, more, uh, more space to navigate the attacking zone. More space usually leads to more opportunities, and that's exactly what the Lakers are looking for. It's Haley Curie and Allison Williams sitting in the box, and it's a big loss for the Lynx because Williams is their leading point scorer. The puck rolls down the left goal line. The body falls, Monica Rayom. It's flipped up the left half wall. Allison Carlson trying to poke it free. Dietmeyer dugs it behind the net. Tasker flips it back toward the left goal line. Monica Rayon back over the wards. A spinning Rachel Smith. Can she clear the zone? She does. The puck free. Tasker smacks it over the Carlson. Dances past the Fenner in the high slot. Tries to put a shot on goal. A back check by Dietmeyer. The puck bounces off the high glass. And Jamie Risley controls. Right now, the Lakers trying to get that offense going. They're trying to establish a four check as well. Hasn't happened quite significantly yet, but perhaps as this third period goes on. Quick line change made by the Lynx with Risley unable to connect with Dietmeyer. The puck rolls back behind the net. Connor Denton flips one over the wards. Carlson smacks it across to Alex Brinkman. Looking to feed Carlson. That one intercepted. The puck bounces high up and into the Grand Valley State bench off the stick of Sally Hurt. So far, just very subtle back and forth action. Nothing too significant on this four on four. Lakers need to establish some, some zone time if they want to try to draw this game even. Faceoff comes out to neutralize in front of the Laker bench. Head coach Duck Wickstrom trying to pull off the upset of the tournament to this point. All the higher seeds have moved on. The number seven Lakers look to shock the number three team in the country. Sally Hurd, the alternate out of Colchester, Vermont, holds at the left circle, a shot deflected wide and turned aside to the far corner by Stone. Delry for the Lynx can't clear it. Her fans on a centering pass, it deflects wide and it's Delry galloping past the red line. 28 seconds to go in four on four. It's shipped off the high wall, controlled by Brickman. The fifth year senior and possibly her final game in the ACHA. Connor Denton, drop feed high slot. Stapleton left point. A rolling puck control down the far wall. Delry clears it. A race for the puck. The freshman Dakota Van Alpeny for the Lynx. Can't cancel out. The puck banks off the wall. It's Brickman pushing it ahead toward the near goal line. Lindsey Gillis for the Lynx plays it. And now we're back to five on five. So we'll just over 10 minutes to go. We'll see how the Lynx play it. Do they go for another goal or conservatively? A shot by Williams deflected wide. It goes back to her in the high slot. Falls to the ice. No penalty call. Dug out by Rayom. She gallops behind the net. And Sockers won along the BB. Her pass intercepted. Nearly gloved down. Sprawling body on the ice. A shot from the right circle by BB. That one fluttering wide. Left point drive by Rayom. 
Hits off a skate, and Sally Hur controls. 25 to 22 shots on goal, the Lynx lead, but we mentioned it, Quinn, it's the least amount of shots that the Lynx have allowed, and among the most that Grand Valley State's been able to post, we're gonna get a whistle for a delayed offside. Well, not only is it the lowest amount of shots that the Lynx have had, it's the closest in the shot margin that we've had in this series. Mackenzie Dros left circle, tees up a slapper that the flex off a stick, and Karam's below the left goal line, Dros fishes it out. Holds below the right circle, at the top, high slot, Arister the flex off the body of Brianna Welgars. The lefty flicks one over the ward, Carlson down the far side, she taps it back in for a line change. Both goals for the Lynx coming in the second period. It was Rachel Smith scoring her second goal of the tournament for the Lakers, their lone tally today. A shot in the high slot deflected wide. Stapleton tries to poke it free. A shot from the low left circle by Williams off of body. And Kaylee Keery flicks one out to the far corner. It bounces off a stick and into the Laker bench. That's well defended by the Lynx there because that could have been a two-on-one if that lead pass connects. So now the inexperienced Lakers, Quinn, as we get a momentary stoppage, how do you attack this last 843? And now we get immediate timeout. We'll touch it up upon that in a bit. So with 843 to go in the game, two to one, the Lynx on top of the Lakers. Grand Valley State looking to make a quick push to finish it up. You're watching the 2019 ACHA Women's Division I National Championships on the ACHA Car Network. Rental, the preferred rental agency of the ACHA. Hogan Transportation official tournament partners of the 2019 ACHA National Championship. Edge Protect, protecting goalie skate blades since 2004 and official sponsor of the 2019 ACHA National Championship. The 2000... 8.43 remaining in the game, and it's a 2-1 lead for Lindenwood Belleville on top of Grand Valley State, but the number seven Lakers giving the number three team in the country a run for its money here to close things out. They are the Grand Valley State Lakers doing everything they can to take it to the links. Maybe one more power play, one more solid opportunity. If that one more power play comes late enough, perhaps they pull the netminder, get a two-woman advantage, and try to draw this game even. Quinn, this is a very young Lakers team. Their first appearance in a couple seasons and the first under head coach Doug Wickstrom. What's the message after this timeout? Uh, after this timeout? Just keep pushing. You're close. You've outplayed them in this period. You're almost there. If you can push, I think if the Lakers push this game to overtime, they wind up winning it. Reed, a shot deflected. Delry, another drive in a slot. Blocked. And it's Haley Curie controlling. Flicks it off a body. That's Brianna Welgars. Can she clear the zone? A couple of bodies fall out onto the ice. Curie backhands it over the wards. Connor Denton. She fans on a clearing attempt. Curie has to play it. Four check on by Michaela Reed. The puck rolling left circle. A sprawling attempt to clear the zone by Lampar. Unable to do so. And it's Gillis. Blow to left goal line. The goal scorer tonight for the Lynx. Both on the power play. It's Dakota McAlpany as she fans on a centering pass. Centering feed now on a spinning try. Dietmeyer has it just sailed through the crease. Could have been something that could have been game, set, match, but in the high slot, Dietmeyer a drive. Wide stick side, McAlpany digs it out. Centering pass back out front. A shot by Dietmeyer, bounces off his stick and over the crossbar. It's controlled, right goal line. Mackenzie Drost pinning with a couple bodies. In the high slot, past the stick of Dietmeyer. Walker a shot, swagger the side off the body of Curie. And she finally plays it off the half wall out to neutral. Quick change made by Grand Valley State. A stretch pass, Gross unable to connect. It rolls down. Icing is washed. Race won by Alicia Williams. Great play by Williams to win that race to prevent what would have been an icing because that sends the puck all the way back down to your defensive end, which is down only up by one goal. That's the last place you want that puck to be. And it forces Allen to make a sprawling save to bring a face-off in the Grand Valley State D zone with seven minutes to go. Williams for the Lynx winning the draw. It's Reed firing one, but now here comes Grand Valley State, Reeland Tasker. 
Top of the right circle, a shot blocked. Below the right circle, another shot deflected off the stick of Tessa O'Connor. Back-to-back -back shots, shot blocked by the freshman from Ottawa. Another good play from this Lynx team. Delry, top of the left circle, her shot behind the net. Fixes it back out, fishes it out, but the net comes off its moorings. Nets have been very quick to come off their moorings this whole series. Clearly this game no different. It's just the slightest bump from Allen knocks it off. It's not as bad as it was yesterday. Six boring deflections. Only two today on this sun. Yeah, so far things have definitely been improved today. Dietmeyer left circle, centers it to McAlpany, the flex to the far corner. She digs it out. Katie Gallier ready for the Lakers. Can't clear the zoom. Left half wall, Mackenzie Roast. Pins the puck to the wall. It's Dietmeyer holding left hash mark. Dances below the goal line. Holds on the backhand now, forehand. Glides ahead, centering feed. The flex off a couple sticks in front. That was off of Drost. It caroms out to the far corner, and it's McAlpany. Fighting for control of the puck. She battles with Monica Rayo. The primary assist on the lone goal for the Lakers. It's Brianna Welgars. Can she clear it? They are able to out to the red line, just past the stick and glove of Gillis. Under six minutes to go, no official shots for Grand Valley State since their goal. It's Mackenzie Drost, flipping one to the far corner, dug out by Allison Stapleton. Backhand feed looking to Carlson. It's poked forward by the Lynx, backhanded out to the red. And Drost sends it maybe five feet before it's finally played ahead and down. Icing is washed. And so, Casey, the reason that play was so delayed there, that puck went off the it inside off the of the door. It hit off the inside of the door that was open. That should be a stoppage in play. And that was why everyone stopped and waited on a whistle that never came. Meanwhile, away from the puck, Carlson and Williams both having their sticks entangled. They wanted a penalty none called. Still five on five. Stapleton banks it off the wall. Megan Beebe drop feed to Carlson, who blazes past the red line. Trudges in the attacking zone, high slot. The puck poke free. Stapleton holds on the backhand. Centering pass, past the stick of Carlson. It bounced off her stick, and we're going to get a penalty. It's going to go on the links. Beebe a shot. Chest save made by Stone, but for the 10th time today, a penalty on the links, and Grand Valley State to the power play. 4.46 to go on the power play now. They're out of time. You, they hit it a little bit under 10% on the regular season. This is your 10th power play. You haven't scored one yet, so from a mathematics standpoint, this should be the one that they score on. Tessa O'Connor sits in the box. That's her first penalty of the afternoon. And now we, are we gonna have a double minor? Is it about to be five on three for two minutes? Jessica Walker sitting in the box. We did not see a second whistle being blown. We're going to have five on three. Quinn, I didn't see the second penalty. I don't know where the calls came from, but this is the greatest opportunity you're ever going to have. So we're going to get slashing and roughing double minors. This game just opened wide, just came wide open for the Lakers. They have two minutes here, but they can score twice because it's five on three. Quinn, effectively, there's 446 on the clock. They'll be on the man advantage, woman advantage, essentially, for four minutes. Both times ticked down at the exact same time. So but if you score five on three, you'll have it again for, excuse me, yeah, still two minutes, my mistake. Anyway, far side, it's Megan Beebe controlling left circle. Her shot gloved down easily by Stone. Be plenty of opportunities to be had here. Should be two minutes of just about nonstop offense for the Lakers. And if you get one early enough and tie this game, you still have a power play. You talked about it earlier as we started the third period. If the Lakers have a power play like this, do you pull the goalie early? You've got to think about it. If you make it a six on three, you're bound to score. BB shot to flex off a body in the slot. Carlson digs it back out below the left goal line. Cross high centering pass. A shot to flex off the stick. It was Rachel Smith who scored earlier. She tried to slap one home, but it blocked off a body. BB a shot. Flutters wide over the crossbar. Dug out by the far corner. Taylor Lampar out to the blue line. Kept in by Tasker. BB 
Holds in the backhand, drags over to the circle, a shot block on the side. It skitters out to the far corner, dug out by Taylor Lampar, but it's cleared out of the zone, a sprawling play made by McAlpany. Yeah, BB trying to pick corners, that's just not really the best time to try to do that. Right now you need to be looking to pass it around, work it to wide open lanes. Lampar ambles past the blue line, drop feet over the BB, drags past the defender, backhand centering pass, no, back to her post, Carlson nearly had a wide open net, it rolls down the far side, Carlson keeps it in. Feeds it to BB high slot, a wrister, blocked. Out to the far corner, Sally Hur. Had an assist on the first goal. Fakes a drive, BB left circle, one-timer over the crossbar. Picked aside by Smith. Pitch for it to Carlson. Drags below the goal line, up top to Hur. Carlson right circle, fakes a shot, Hur high slot. Drags, back to Carlson, off for skate, no, rebound, they score! It's Taylor Lampar on the power play. We're tied at two. And you saw it happening right when it got soccered right into the middle of the net. And all of a sudden, Lampar has it just appear on her backhand. And she said, thank you very much, and pots it home. We're even at two. And the Lakers are still on the power play for 24 seconds. That's correct, Casey. 24 seconds on the power play for the Lakers. Even if that's not enough time to get a goal, it is enough time to establish yourself in the offensive zone when play gets back to five on five. Two unanswered goals by Grand Valley State. That's a great play by Carlson to play that puck with her skate. Hannah Stone, the ACHA All-American, just baffled in net. One of the crazier games you will ever see. A total of 14 penalties. And finally, the Lakers control on the power play. They're one for 10. Now, Casey, I would say it's pretty safe to say next goal wins this game. Puck rolls behind the goal line. Four check on by the Lynx, shorthanded. 10 seconds to go before we get back to five on five. It's Alex Brinkman, the Rochester Hills, Minnesota native. Dancing in the defensive zone. Slack pass over the wards. Monica Rayon. Cross ice feed. Stapleton trying to play at the red line. It rolls past her stick. And it's Mackenzie White. This crowd is stunned on both sides. It's a deafening silence at times, but now fans finally making some noise. It's Alex Brinkman at the left point, trying to twist it below the goal line. It's pickpocketed by Alicia Williams. One hands it to Melissa Delry. She glides ahead back to Williams. At the left hash mark, puts on the brakes, gets a couple of bodies to get by her. Williams gets a third, a shot close ended, blocker to the side by Allen, kept in at the right point by Risley. Banks it behind the net, Delry. Dances past the defender, can't get past the second. Brinkman serves one off the high wall. It's pitched up by Tasker, and it rolls down into the Lynx defensive zone. Less than two minutes to go. 25 24 shots on goal. Here's Beebe in the high slot. Meanders past the defender. We're going to get another penalty. It's going to go on the Lynx. The story of the game is the Lynx lack of discipline. I've said from jump, whichever team, I said it after game one, whichever team can figure out how to play disciplined hockey, that is the team that will go on to win this series. The Lakers have been disciplined. The Lynx have been the absolute opposite of that. So for the final minute 41, unless we go into overtime, the Lakers are going to be on the women advantage. And if the Lakers can't score, they will start overtime with an advantage. But if you're the Lakers, you're thinking you're not going to overtime. 13 penalties on Lindenwood Belleville, a season high. There's just not enough words in the English dictionary to describe how this game has gone. It looked like the Lakers were dead in the water to begin this period. And now they have a chance to win the game. And a really good chance at that. Another power play here. And if you're the Lynx, do not take another penalty and send this to five on three. The last four penalties have gone to Belleville. Left point, Breland Tasker swats it to Carlson. Cross ice pass to the right circle. It's Taylor Lampar, the puck nudged free. A lone forward checker, Dakota McAlpany. It rolls down to near goal line. McAlpany on the forward check. It close ended, and the puck nearly knocks it off. It's mooring, it does, with 87 seconds to go. Minute 40 on the power play, 127 left in period number three. Shots are 25 24 in favor of the Lynx. 
couple more shots for the Lakers. This will be the first time all series they've led in shots on goal. Lindsey Gillis skating over toward the scorer's table before she makes her way back into the attacking zone. Short-handed face-off for the Lynx. It's won by Grand Valley State, and it's controlled by Sally Hurt. The junior starts one quickly ahead towards Taylor Lampard, trudges past the red line, guides it in the attacking zone. It's Carlson, right hash mark, below the goal line, centering pass, just past the stick of Lampard. It's controlled near side, Rachel Smith. Carlson gets pinned to the wall with 65 seconds to go. Swatted down the near wall. Smith, the Naperville, Illinois native, can't keep it in. But she holds high slot. Lampara shot, blocker to the side, rebound in front. Another shot deflects off a sprawling stick. It's gone down, no icing because the Lynx are on the penalty kill. And a quick change made by Belleville. Bodies are gassed right now over these last 40 seconds. It's Connor Denton, the transfer from McKendry. Starting one to Smith. Cross ice feed, nobody near the red line. McAlpany tries to bank it down the length of the ice, but it bounces off a stick and into the Grand Valley State bench. This will be a off, uh, neutral zone draw, but same place it would be if the Link, or sorry, if the Lakers had entered the zone off sides. So good opportunity here if they can get possession off this faceoff. It's Allison Carlson. The hero for the Lakers winning the draw. Haley Curie banks it down the far wall. Now we get a whistle for an offside. 24.5 left. It's enough time for the Lakers, but they've got to get something going in a hurry. If Grand Valley State gets the puck in the attacking zone, do you pull Allen? Never. No way. Face off one by the Lynx. It rolls down McAlpin. He swats one down from left to right. Allen forced to play it. And now she puts her glove on top to halt play. That's yeah. been a story of the tournament. When she has time, she elects to put the glove on to stop play instead of banking off the wall to possibly start a break. Well, her first thought was to pass that puck along, but there was too much pressure from Belleville. A really good forecheck forced Allen to pop down on top of it. Lindsey Gillis trying to send somebody to the bench. But she has to go back. She was trying to swap out Tessa O'Connor. Gillis, the main goal scorer tonight for the Lynx with both goals. It's Delry winning the draw. Right circle. It's Walker. Banks it behind the net. Caroms off the, off the uh, net. BB tries to clear it. Kept in O'Connor, left point. A centering feed, nobody home. Rolling puck, settled down by BB. Banks it off the wall. It's kept in. Right point. Smith can't play it further, and we're going over done. A winner go home game goes into overtime. The Lakers end the third with two unanswered goals. The Lakers taking advantage of their just abundance of power play opportunities. And now they have a chance to push this game to overtime. They'll start overtime with 13 seconds on the power play. And frankly, the way that the Lynx have been playing, they'll be on one pretty soon after that. So through 60, we're playing extras. Winner moves on to the semifinals. You're watching the 2019 ACHA Women's Division I National Championships on the ACHA Network. A special thank you to our 2019 National Tournament sponsors. Please support them as they have supported us. Mike Gary Sportswear, the official merchandise supplier of the 2019 ACHA. The 2019 ACHA National Championships are brought to you by Budget Car Rental, the preferred rental agency of the ACHA. Hogan Transportation, official tournament partners of the 2019 ACHA National Championships. The 2019 ACHA National Championships are brought to you by Budget Car Rental, the preferred rental agency of the ACHA. Hogan Transportation, official tournament partners of the 2019 ACHA National Championships. Edge Protect, protecting goalie skate blades since 2004 and official sponsor of the 2019 ACHA National Championships. The 2000... The future waits for no one. So we refuse to wait for it. We're not just pilots and engineers. We are pioneers. Today, battles are waged in nanoseconds. Planes are piloted from the other side of the world. We 
turn night into day and fly missions in space. The future's not coming. It's already here. This is the future. Join us and be the future. Hockey heads are special, which is why we protect them with a helmet designed, built, and tested to endure real-world hockey impacts. There's a phenomenon of Grand Valley State University.
60 minutes, not enough. Free hockey in Frisco. 20 more minutes in overtime to determine who moves on to the semifinals. It's the number three Lindenwood University Belleville Lynx and the number seven Grand Valley State Lakers in the extra frame. Tied at two. Casey roll with you alongside Quinn Kuski. Quinn, I still can't get my mind around how Grand Valley State ended up tying the game. This season, however, the Lakers 0-3 in overtime. How do they change that against the number three team in the country? Keep letting the Lynx do what they've been doing the whole game, shoot themselves in the foot. The Lynx can't stay out of the box, and if that trend continues, the Lakers should win this game pretty easily. 13 penalties on the Lynx, a season high. Their previous was 11 back on February 11th, so 13 penalties is a high number, but not something that Cat Hanna and this Lynx team is used, is uh, not necessarily unfamiliar with. Meanwhile, for the Lakers, they close the third period on a 2-0 run. They have all the momentum going into this overtime frame. Who needs to step up and score potentially the game-winning goal? Oh, uh, well, if you're the Lakers, your game-winning goal has got to come from Allison Carlson. She's been on fire this whole tournament, and it wouldn't be that big of a surprise if she does it again. Three goals in this tournament, two yesterday in the loss. Two of those three have come on the power play. The Lakers on the women advantage for 13 seconds. It's the captain, Ashley Dietmeyer, who sat in the box for hooking to close out the third period. Yeah, very brief power play here for the Lakers to kick off period number four, the overtime period. Uh, 13 seconds, and there we go. We'll keep playing until we have a goal scorer, Casey. It's overtime. Winner dances on. The loser goes home. And face off won by the Lakers, Allison Carlson. Grand Valley State moves from left to right in the overtime frame. Fanning on a centering pass, Carlson. It rolls to the stick of Allison Stapleton. She controls. Gallops ahead of the attacking zone. Top of the left circle, a slap shot. Skitters wide over the crossbar. Rolling puck dug out of the near corner by Katie Lacusta. Pinning to the wall, a couple defenders, and she smacks it along to Lindsey Gillis. The goal scored tonight for the Lynx, a couple on the power play. It rolls down, and icing is the call as soon as Dietmeyer gets out of the sin bin. So the Lynx haven't been able to score outside of the two power play goals. The Lakers have one in five on five and one with a five on three. So the key of overtime, it's been the key of this whole series, is discipline. The first, I wouldn't be surprised if the first power play of overtime is a goal. The Lynx haven't scored since the 10, 14 mark in the second. It's hurt, left point, a shot deflected wide. It sticked the side in the butterfly by Stone. It still rolls behind the net. Controlling Alex Brinkman, she momentarily had it. It's forked out by Mackenzie Dros, but not out of the zone. Brinkman rings it around the far wall. Rachel Smith, the Naperville, Illinois native for the Lakers, can't uh, keep it in. And Alicia Williams banks it off the wall to Dietmeyer. She gallops ahead past the red line, trudges in the attacking zone, top of the left circle at the dot. Her shot deflects off the stick of Sally Hur. It rolls back out to the left circle. A shot by Gillis deflected wide over toward the far corner. Dug out by Reed, right hash mark. Drives below the goal line, pinned to the wall. A couple of bodies scrapping for it. And Alex Brinkman comes away with it for the Lakers. She reverses direction to her. The puck rolls out to the blue line, kept in by Michaela Reed. Right circle centering pass into the ice slot. The freshman, Hallie Fisher, trying to play it. It's out below the right goal line, banked up the wall. It's Williams, right point, a shot deflected wide. A second chance opportunity, smacked out to the left point. O'Connor tries to lob it behind the goal line. The puck is up toward the left boards. A couple bodies scrumming for it at the left goal line. It's Tessa O'Connor. She tries to play it for the clears the zone out to neutral ice. Early on, the Lynx showing a bit of advantage here in this five-on-five -five action. It's Alicia Williams, the 10th leading scorer in the country, holding at the right point, pickpocketed away. It's kept in the zone momentarily by O'Connor before it skips off her stick. Dietmeyer plays it forward for the Lynx, but it's jabbed back out to the red line. O'Connor smacks it to the far side. Dietmeyer gains his own onside. Right circle, takes a shot in a high slot, a drive, no. Rebound in front, and Allen stands up as she scoops it in her glove for the save. There's your first major opportunity of overtime. Allen stands tall at six foot three. She always tends to stand tall, but that was a huge save from Allen, keeping her team 
from going home. And with goaltending, Hannah Stone, a freshman, an ACHA All-American, this is her biggest stage she's faced so far. What are the motions going in the freshman goalkeeper's mind? Oh, uh, you, you've got to try to put the nerves in the back of your mind, but it's always easier said than done. And here comes a penalty. And it's and gonna guess go on the links. Hooking is the call. Two minutes and 33 seconds into overtime. The Lynx just have not been able to play disciplined hockey. They've been super undisciplined this entire game. And the Lakers might be about to take advantage and push their ticket to a game against the, the Liberty Flames. It's Ashley Dietmeyer sitting in the box. Quinn, she has four penalties today on the season. She had six penalty minutes all year in the regular season. So an uncharacteristic performance by the fifth-year captain. Out to the right circle, kept in by Taylor Lampar. Straight away, BB a shot to flex off a sprawling body of Michaela Reed. It rolls out to the red line. It's flipped back out as far as the red by Jamie Risley, but here comes Carlson at the right circle. Dances past the defender, centering pass, trying to connect with Smith. It rolls down the far side. Carlson keeps it in left goal line. Centering pass. Here's a shot deflected wide off the stick of Smith. Holding below the right circle, it's Lampars, fans on it. Out to the right point, Breland Tasker slides it across far side. Here's a shot by Beebe, bounces off a of body, rolls in the slot. Carlson tries to poke it free. It's jabbed free by Risley. It rolls out toward the left half wall. Michaela Reed flips it as far as the blue line. They can't clear it. Here's Carlson, high slot, jabs it in front. A back hit feed. Smith tries to poke it home, and a save by Stone. Rachel Smith tried to go between the legs to win it in overtime. And there you see the first big opportunity for the Lakers. They still got a minute 14 on this power play. And look at your shots, 27-26, still in favor of the Lynx. But for the course of this power play, the Lakers might take the advantage on total shots. And that would be the first time all series that's happened. Face off one by Grand Valley State. They've won the last three in the attacking zone. BB a shot from the left point, deflected wide, back hit shot in front. Carlson trying to poke it free, but Stone throws the trapper on top to halt play. Just constant pressure from the Lakers on this power play. This is exactly what you want to do. Just force Stone to potentially make a mistake, take advantage of it, and go home, and then get send the send Belleville home and get ready for the game against the Flames. It's Alex Brinkman, the fifth-year senior, taking a face-off against Dakota McAlpany, the freshman out of Brockville, Ontario. Brinkman gets tossed. It's Stapleton winning the faceoff. Brinkman can't keep it in his own. It's swatted down by Jamie Risley. Allen flips it to the far corner. BB first to it. Four check gone. It's, it's Delry holding right circle, centering pass. Now a shot. It's gloved down. A short handed chance by the Lynx, but the faceoff comes with 51 seconds to go and the Lakers' power play. Well, if you're the Lynx, maybe you need to really make sure you try to score short handed because clearly you're not going to be playing five on five very much. 14 penalties in this game, and four have gone on the captain, Ashley Dietmeyer. It's worked out to the right point. One time, off the stick of Walker, barely crosses the goal line. It hits off the post and caroms to the far side. Oh my goodness. That's the third post today and the first one for the Lynx. It still remains two to two in overtime. Brinkman stretching one to Stapleton, rolls past her stick. It's lobbed down by Katie Tima, bounces off the red line. And it's Connor Denton, the junior transfer at the McKendree University, flipping it to the far corner. Haley Curie, the captain, takes a spill out on the ice, no penalty. It's dug out by Stapleton as far as the red line. 10 seconds to go on the penalty. Here's O'Connor a shot, deflects off the glove of Allen, out to the right point, tap back in by Gillis, catches the high glass. And we're back to five on five hockey, Dietmeyer out of the box back to five on five, but the question is for how long? It's forked out to the red line by Brinkman. Controlling, it's Monica Rayo. Bounces off the wall, Allen paddles it aside to the near corner. Haley Curie, can she clear it? She lobs it off the glass, gloved down by Gillis. They keep the zone, are the Lynx. And now it's finally moved out to neutral ice. Brianna Welgars, the four checker for the Lakers, trying to get it past Jamie Risley. She cannot, and Risley. Ambles it out to the far wing, just underneath the stick of Drost. It's down, no icing. Connor Denton plays it behind the net. 28-27, shots on goal. Four check by the links, it's Williams. Top of the right circle. Drives across the slot. Her shot bounces off the stick of Katie Tima. 
A rebounded front, bounces behind the goal line. BB for the Lakers, can't clear it. It's team in the high slot, rolling puck controlled by Williams, right point. Flips it up off the glass, gets it to herself, straight away it's Gillis, walking in a shot. Block of the side by Allen, over toward the near corner. Gillis controls left hash mark, a shot bounces off a stick and hop the high glass nearly up and into the match, but play continues. Williams drop feed to Katie Stelling. It bounces off her stick and here comes Connor Denton. She gallops past the red line, high steps in the attacking zone, holds at the right hash mark, short-handed one on four, backhand centering pass, nobody home, it hits off the side of the net and Stone forced to glove it down. Stone covers that one up, 29-28, the shot count. Super close in shots, every other game has had a 20 shot count, a 20 shot difference easily. This one has been close and deservedly so as it's in overtime. It's Carlson winning the draw. Right point, Breland Tasker shot. Bodies in front. Carlson tries to poke it free, but another save by Stone. This Laker offense has come to life. You can feel the energy coming off of their bench. They know they're close. Grand Valley State scored two unanswered to end regulation. Face off pushed forward by Carlson, driving below the left goal line, holds in the back end, centering pass, just past the stick of Taylor Lampard, bounces to the near corner, it's flipped out to the red line. Dietmeyer has it, two on one, one man rush if they hurry. At the left circle, holds in the back end, drags, she scores! It's Ashley Dietmeyer, the captain in overtime! Belleville dances on to the semifinals! A great move by Dietmeyer, goes five hole on Lauren Allen, forced her to slide from her right to her left, and the second she went to move, she just flips that thing backhand right into the five hole, and that will do it. The Lynx will take on the Adrian College Bulldogs. It was Dietmeyer's penalty that allowed Grand Valley State to tie it in regulation, but in overtime. The captain answers the call, and the Lynx survive. They move on to the semis. It's Dietmeyer's it. third goal of the tournament. And that should do it here. Team's just going to gather around Lauren Allen. The um, the Lakers gather around the netminder, console her. That's the last. That's the last shot she'll face as a goalie for this team. The fifth-year senior out of Gregory, Michigan, turns aside 27 shots in a loss. But the freshman Hannah Stone, her counterpart, and the ACHA goaltending leader in save percentage and goals against average, continues. A phenomenal freshman season. They move on to the semis for a chance to win what could be their first national championship. Allison Carlson, the expression says it all as she slowly skates out to the net mouth. And Carlson threw her stick and gloves into the bench in disgust. She cannot believe that they lost this game after having so many opportunities. The senior from Marquette, Michigan, and the transfer from Northern Michigan in her second season with Grand Valley State, just missing out on the tournament last year, coming oh so close to upending the number three team in the country. But her college career ends on a sour note. The Lynx dance on to the semifinal where they take on the number two Adrian College Bulldogs. Quinn Kuski, your final thoughts. Uh, the Lynx, they're going on to play Adrian College, but they can't play the Lynx like they did the Lakers these three games. The second game, sure, but games one and two, the Lynx, and even in game three, the Lynx took a ton of penalties. If you do that against Adrian College, they will decimate you in the semifinals. On the season, Lindenwood University Belleville is 12 and 1 when Dietmeyer scores the goal. None better than the game winning goal. The Lynx dance on to the semis where they await the number two team in the country in Adrian College. So for the final time, for Quinn Tusky, our entire ACHA National Championships broadcast crew, Casey Rule saying so long from the Comerica Center in downtown Frisco. You've been watching the 2019 ACHA Women's Division I National Championships on the ACHA Network.